There's a reason that, from a narrative standpoint, comic books are so often compared to soap operas. They seemingly go on forever, meaning that their characters are trapped in a perpetual second act, doomed to never reach any sort of resolution or closure to their stories. Where soap operas are limited in terms of their budget and just how much their viewers will believe, although that time legit vampires turned up in General Hospital was pushing it a bit, comics have a way of surprising, shocking and entertaining in a way no other medium can match which means that it can also disappoint, upset and anger in a way no other medium can manage. At times, creative teams have toyed with emotions in all the wrong ways, delivering plot twists and dramatic reveals that ruin old stories, don't make any sense or are simply so harebrained that you have to laugh. My name's Ori, this is What Culture, and these are the 10 most stupid twists in comics. Number 10, Sonic the Hedgehog lives on Cthulhu ravaged Earth. The Sonic the Hedgehog comics published by Archie aren't known for hewing very close to the story of the games they're based on. In fact, for a large period, the comic was written by Ken Penders, a guy who had never been within 10 feet of a Sega title. Instead, using the comic as a way of getting his terrible Tolkien-inspired fantasy stories out into the world. Having ousted Penders, although a lawsuit regarding who owns all the terrible characters he created is still on the go, Archie decided to steer your favorite blue blur back towards the continuity set in the video games. In the hope of catching some crossover fans, one of the big changes they made was the reveal that, like the games, all the Sonic stories that had so far appeared had happened on Earth. Just one problem there, in that the series had made it pretty clear all of these wacky furry adventures had been happening on a planet called Mobius. So how did they get around that? With the twist that Mobius had been Earth all along, tens of thousands of years in the future, after most of humanity had been destroyed by a Cthulhu-esque cosmic horror. Sonic the Hedgehog lives in a post-apocalyptic dystopia and kids love those. Number nine, Zorn is Magneto until he isn't. Grant Morrison's run on New X-Men revitalized a set of characters who had stagnated over the previous decade due to endless crossover events a larger cast of characters than a long-running soap opera and for becoming the absolute nader of comic book deaths. It also reveled in the series history in the way that Grant Morrison loves to, evidenced by his later take on Batman. So when it turned out that Zorn, whose brain is a star and was convinced not to take off his helmet and destroy the world by the X-Men, was actually their Magneto in disguise, it wasn't that surprising. Now, Magneto as Zorn isn't the stupid twist here. No, no. The stupid twist is what happened after that. Morrison wrapped his run up with the Planet X storyline, which involved Magneto revealing his deception, killing Jean Grey and being decapitated in turn by Wolverine. Chuck Austin had other ideas though. People like this Zorn guy. And so both he and Magneto returned, this time as distinct characters. It turns out this Zorn, first name Shen, is the twin brother of the original Zorn, who was actually just pretending to be Magneto, which explains why Eric's not really dead either. Number eight, Armageddon 2001 doesn't make sense because fans ruined it. Released back in 1991, when the titular year was but a far-flung future, Armageddon 2001 was framed by a central mystery. What superhero went insane, became the supervillain monarch, and presided over a dystopian future, aren't they all, in the year 2030? The former mystery turned out to be pretty easy to solve, and fans easily managed to figure out that the man who would be monarch was the C-list hero Captain Atom. Still, DC plowed on. Undeterred by the veil being dropped too soon and effectively ruining the climax of their months long event because they had an ace up their sleeve. That ace turned out to be that Goodwin simply elected to change Monarch's identity at the last minute. Despite the fact that it made absolutely no sense and meant all of the foreshadowing he had so obviously sprinkled throughout the story had been for naught. Not only that, but the new reveal, Hawk, Another C-lister had already been categorically ruled out of the equation on two separate occasions. Number seven, Batman's nemesis is in middle school. Anarchy was pretty silly, even for a Batman villain. Still, during the late 80s, he became one of the Cape Crusaders' main enemies, with the hero questioning the anarchist vigilante's methods and targets. Like Batman, Anarchy was without superpowers, instead relying on his intelligence and physicality to carry him through his acts of social revolution. His secret identity was kept strictly under wraps for his first appearance, with an ongoing tease regarding a man and his young son going about their day-to-day -day business, strongly hinting that that man was Anarchy. 
Turns out it was a double bluff and Anarchy was actually the kid all along. The latest and greatest addition to the hallowed halls of Batman's Rogue Gallery was a 12 year old boy who had heard a Sex Pistols album and decided to become a vigilante. Number six, everyone is scrolls. Marvel's Secret Invasion had a higher concept than the majority of their big event books. The limited series had the shocking reveal that the malevolent shape-shifting aliens, the Skrulls, had been covertly replacing some of Earth's most prominent superheroes with nobody any the wiser until Elektra is killed, again, and her face immediately gets all green and bumpy and gross. And then it turns out Hank Pym, who was performing the autopsy, was also a scroll imposter. Once the shock of all those twists wears off, incredulity quickly sets in. The real motivation behind the secret invasion and each successive reveal of who had and hadn't been a scroll all along turned out to simply be a good excuse to undo a load of bad characterization and contradicting storylines throughout Marvel history. Why has Hank Pym fluctuated between a hero and a huge jerk? Oh, because he was an alien in disguise. Still, we got some neat Lionel Francis U art out of it, if nothing else. There was, there was, really, there was really nothing else. Number five, Sharon Carter shot Captain America. One of the most shocking parts of Civil War, a series that dealt mainly in shocks from the reveal that Thor had been cloned to Spider-Man revealing his identity to the world, was the climatic battle which saw Captain America lead his group of rebels who opposed the government's Superhuman Registration Act against the might of Advocate Iron Man's own troops. Cap's secret Avengers lose out and Steve Rogers is placed under arrest only to be assassinated on the steps of the very court he was about to be tried in. The identity of Steve Rogers' killer wasn't revealed until much later. In a stupid twist that nobody saw coming because it made exactly zero sense, the person who pulled the trigger turned out to be Sharon Carter, S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, niece of Cap's World War II girlfriend Peggy Carter. Luckily, she doesn't have to feel guilty about her part in the death of Captain America. She had been brainwashed by supervillain Dr. Fal Faustus, of course. Eventually, she manages to shake the hypnotic suggestion and sets about bringing Rogers back from the dead. Number four, Hush pulls off his bandages and isn't Jason Todd. Jason Todd was long believed to be the one dead comic book character who couldn't, nay, shouldn't ever rise from his grave, which meant that when a mysterious new villain named Hush turned up to menace Batman, and it was heavily hinted that the bandages this master manipulator wore were concealing the visage of a resurrected, all grown up Todd, fans were rightly anxious. Or well, they would have been rightly anxious if the actual reveal of Hush's identity hadn't been a total cop out especially since DC had already surreptitiously leaked an image purporting to be Jason Todd in Hush's trench coat. That was just Clayface pretending to be Jason Todd, pretending to be Hush. The real culprit turned out to be Dr. Thomas Elliot, a childhood friend of Bruce Wayne, who had only been introduced a few months prior, and so nobody would have seen this particular twist come in. Number three, Peter Parker's a clone. Now he's not, now he is. Maximum clonage is the name of the game, and maximum disappointment is its aim. In the hopes of stirring up some publicity and or controversy, editor-in-chief Bob Harris oversaw the Clone Saga, an epic tale 20 years in the making which revealed that the Peter Parker readers had grown to love had in fact been a clone of the original since some point in the 70s. So thanks to Harris, Jerry Conway and the rest of the Spidey editorial team, readers had two decades of their favourite stories rendered invalid or at least cheapened somewhat because they hadn't starred the real Peter Parker. That Peter probably scarpered to start a family with Mary Jane, leaving the original, whoever by the name of Ben Riley to take his place as New York's premier wall crawler. Just when fans had managed to adjust to this major sea change and just about settled into Ben Riley as Spider-Man, the rug got pulled out from under them again when it turned out that both Peters and the Jackal, who had cloned Spidey in the first place, had all actually been manipulated by Norman Osborn, who had come back from the dead somehow. And if this isn't idiotic enough, he was capped off with the final twist that Ben had been the clone all along, thus making the entire endeavor completely pointless and without consequence. Number two, Sergeant Fury and the LMDs. Despite being a cornerstone of both Marvel Comics and the cinematic universe, S.H.I.E.L.D. figurehead has found himself killed off more times than, well, anybody else who's been mentioned on this list, only to mysteriously come back to life. The ghost in the machine in question, the life model decoy. First appearing way back in 1965, during Fury's first post-Howling Commandos comic, 
LMDs are robots that manage to perfectly duplicate all the outward appearances of anyone, which means they can get into all sorts of life-threatening scrapes without the real person putting themselves at any risk. And it means that writers can keep tricking us into thinking they've killed Fury, only for it to turn out that it was an LMD all along. And number one, every part of identity crisis. Look, we rag on Brad Meltzer's and Rags Morales' identity crisis miniseries a lot on here. And rightfully so. The eventual resolution as to who murdered Sue Dibney, the wife of Elongated Man, was bad enough in itself. The reveal that the perpetrator was none other than Jean Loring and she had killed Sue in an attempt to bring her and Palmer back together, which isn't really up there with John Cusack holding a boombox up on your lawn in the realms of all-time great romantic gestures. Perhaps the worst twist that came out of identity crisis however was that the justice league had been secretly getting magician zatanna to routinely wipe people's minds and they've been doing it for years identity crisis is a cynical comic book that had loads of ridiculous twists and those twists managed to borderline ruin a large proportion of dc superheroes thanks a lot Meltzer. and there you have it the 10 most stupid twists in comics did i miss any out let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like share and subscribe for more amazing content I've been Ori with an A from What Culture. You've been amazing. Be good. And if you can't be good, be bloody careful. Peace.